Yeah, and I wanted to congratulate the organizers. I mean, this, this workshop is really uh, fantastic and with many, many uh, very interesting people in the talk. Uh, so, so today I'll just, I'll tell you about some work we have done uh, uh, in 2022, at least it was finished in 2022, <laughs> and uh, done by different people, uh, uh, notably uh, by Kai Lixi, who is now at the University of Amsterdam, uh, do, and this this was his, uh, uh, his his work for his postdoc actually at the, at the University of Bordeaux. He was uh, um, uh, Benjamin Gorin uh, collaborated for the tracking, and we had uh, uh, Rory Sarbus who also did some simulations, and Laura Alvarez who contributed with uh, uh, different sized particles. Uh, Jean Michel Rompnou who uh, actually helped with the optics and the making of the particles. And I had to battle with referees at some point, I think. Uh, but uh, so this work is actually about in, uh, encapsulating uh, active particles inside the droplet. And the, the, and, and the question we ask is, what, does what will activity do to the properties of the droplet? And the experiment we thought of was, uh, OK, well, let's, let's deform this droplet the resistance to this deformation comes mostly from the surface tension, okay? But suppose we turn on the activity of the particles. Will that resistance increase, decrease? Will it be anisotropic? So this is the question we will ask, okay? So uh, we will make the Janus particles ourselves because we need them with uh, at least controlled properties and different sizes. And we will uh, deform droplets in, uh, in, a, in a simple, hydrodynamic setup uh, that uh, we will characterize. So let me just, uh, uh, so this, the, in a sense, we want to measure some sort of mechanical pressure using this droplet deformation, okay? Uh, so mechanical pressure actually for active swimmers is a long story. And one of the earliest expressions is this one. So it just tells you that the pressure is basically related to the number density of particles their, uh, their mobility coefficient, which is given by just the viscosity and the size of the particles, it's proportional to the velocity squared, like in, a, in some sort of kinetic theory, and some persistence time. This persistence time can be a tumbling time, for example, as for a bacteria, or it can be some uh, rotational diffusion time, okay? Uh, these, are, these, these expressions have been already used in different studies, and, uh, uh, and it's, I don't know whether it's admitted, but at least this is supposed to work for at least small concentrations. This, this, this type of expression has been, uh, uh, is in debate because uh, like this paper will tell you, for example, that this may depend a lot on how particles interact with boundaries. If they have a torque, for example, at boundaries, this pressure will not be a state constant. Uh, other studies by, uh, by Loeb and, and collaborator uh, will tell you that this, this, this pressure will also depend on the curvature, for example, okay? Or, in, as in this study here, this, this pressure can depend strongly on how the, um, the particles actually interact with each other through their activity. Uh, but in any case, it's, uh, there are very few measurements of this pressure at different concentrations. One of the few studies is, is this one, where they measured it in some... Um, sedimentation experiment. Uh, but I mean, we, we know, we, we know from previous studies, at least in our group, that this, this uh, uh, that active particles enclosed in a container can behave strangely. This is one illustration. So these are like, uh, these are macroscopic rod-like particles of aspect ratio roughly three uh, contained in a, in a circle. Uh, and you can see them, I mean, they, they can be perpendicular and parallel to the wall. So they, their interaction with the wall can be very different uh, depending on their state. Uh, and actually, some of these can actually uh, form clusters. And these clusters can be uh, very long lived. So the question of what is the pressure felt by the, uh, the mechanical pressure felt by the boundaries is, <laughs> is, is not easy to answer, okay? This can have actually dramatic consequences as I will show you with this little uh, video here. So these are just the same particles except that instead of being fixed, the, the, uh, the arena can be mobile. And because they form these clusters, I mean, they exert 
very strong uh, forces uh, which can actually deform and move uh, the boundary uh, severely, actually. And they can actually uh, they can actually exert uh, large forces. This is just a similar experiment, except we put a, a, um, a cantilever here. And as you can see, they can move it up and, and push things. So these are uh, some of the consequences of uh, uh, of of the torque that the particles exert on the boundaries. They they form clusters and can exert forces that are quite uh, strong. But this is known in in other situations. In the group of Dosho, for example, they they put uh, a bunch of particles. These are just Brownian-like particles uh, in a in a container, and as you can see, they they sort of uh, move. This, this boundary a little bit. So they exert some sort of pressure on this boundary. And this is sort of intuitive. This pressure is higher in the dense part. But when the particles are active, that means they, they have some persistence length uh, and persistence time, the boundary is actually unstable. And they could not measure pressure uh, very easily. Okay. This is also true, for example, in uh, when particles are enclosed in very, very soft vesicles. This is work from Jan Vermont's group. Uh, so these particles actually exert uh, very large forces and, 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 and uh, deform the, the vesicle in very strange ways. This is also the case in this work here from Wilson Kuhn's group where uh, bacteria are enclosed in vesicles. And as you can see, the, the vesicle being very, very uh, flexible they run away with a piece of vesicle here. Yeah. Or uh, this, this has been actually realized even earlier in numerical simulations in Marchetti's group where particles actually can deform and exert forces in very strange, uh, uh, very strange way. So it's just to <laughs> tell you, it's probably worthwhile measuring these processes, at least the mechanical effect of activity on flexible, uh, boundaries. Okay, uh, so so let me just give you a few uh, a, a few uh, details about the experiment. So as I told you, we we make our particles. These are Janus particles. We have already seen beautiful pictures of these things. Uh, so they they're just half coated plastic, ha uh, half coated um, uh, plastic particles, half coated with a metallic layer. Uh, and we will just shine light on them, on them. That way we can just turn them on and off uh, at will, okay? Uh, so so we, just, we just make them in, in the lab using an electron beam deposition method, and we just use like chrome titanium or chromium gold layers on different plastic particles, either of polystyrene or PMMA of different sizes going from a couple of microns all the way to 1020 microns. The, uh, so the, our particles look like this. So you can see that they, they're, they're half-coated metallic uh, particle uh, with a metallic layer, which is, which is what you see here. And this is just the, the rest of the plastic. Uh, as I told you before, we want to deform these particles and measure the, the, the resistance to deformation. And to do this, we just we use a, a, an old setup. This is, a, this is Taylor's four mil uh, setup. Uh, you just take a, a, a channel with four uh, outlets, and so you, you, you push fluid from two opposing outlets, and it will come out from the other one. So you, you get an extensional flow in this region with a stagnation point, and this extensional flow will deform your droplets. This is a one low situation, and you can, you can see here the flow field, for example. Flow is coming in from these two directions, coming out here, uh, velocity is nil in the center, there is a stagnation point, and there is an extension, an extensional rate all over this region, which, as you can see here, is roughly constant over uh, roughly one millimeter region. Okay? Uh, the extensional rate can, uh, uh, can be defined from, of course, the velocity versus distance at the center. As, I, as you can see, it's very well defined over large distances. I mean, uh, we need it to be so, because we, if we want to do uh, drops of a few hundred micron in diameter, we want this thing to be constant over 
a reasonably large area. I mean, that's constant over at least 500 micron area, okay? Uh, this, uh, the extension rate does not vary much with the depth, and it can be roughly constant over at least 200 to 300 microns in the, in the, in the vertical direction. This is the, let's say, the, the horizontal plane where the extensional extension is occurring, but it's also occurring in the other. And this extension rate can be varied with just the flow. So we have some control over the particles and the flow. Okay? And, and of course, uh, this, this, has, this is known since uh, the 30s. Uh, if, you, if you, let me just, yeah, we define the, the long axis and the small axis of, of the drop. And, and of course, if you, if you put a drop in such a flow, it first starts out, it's spherical, so this, this, this uh, deformation rate is zero, uh, and then it goes up as time goes on. It goes up to a constant value, and this constant value depends on the extension rate that you impose. Okay, if you plot this uh, plateau value here, it just varies with the capillary number. Yeah, the capillary number is nothing else than the just the extensional stress divided by the capillary stress, and this. The, 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 this relation is just twice uh, the capillary number. Huh? Lambda here is the uh, viscosity ratio between drop and solvent. Just, just to, the drop is at least 100 times less viscous than the solvent. We use silicon oils of roughly one pascal second in, in viscosity. And so this lambda here is basically one, is basically zero, yeah? So this thing, this, this D infinity, varies as just twice the capillary number. And this, this relation is obeyed quite well, as you can see in this graph. And actually from this, you can, you can estimate the surface tension. Just to show you that this, the, the, we have some control over the, the setup and the deformation we will apply to our drops. Uh, next thing, I mean, we want to shine light on these drops. Our drops will be roughly a uh, few hundred microns in diameter, is that, as you will see. Some, uh, and we need to shine light on these things to make the particles move, okay? Uh, if we shine a laser beam directly on these drops, and, and as you probably know, the laser beam has a Gaussian profile, and we will not be uh, illuminating our particles equivalently all over the drop, okay? So, so we, we, we don't cheat. I mean, we just use standard <laughs> procedures and transform this Gaussian uh, profile into what is called the talc pad pro profile. This you do using uh, a shaper. I mean, you, you, you call a company and give them specifications and they sell you a mask that transforms your Gaussian beam into a roughly flat top uh, profile. And as you can see here, or this is one of them, uh, we, can, we can illuminate with roughly uh, constant intensity uh, an area uh, of, of roughly of more than 100 micron in diameter, okay? So this will limit, for example, the size of the drops we will use, okay? Our drops will be roughly 100 microns, so they can be, uh, they can fit into this, this region and all of our particles will be illuminated with constant intensity. Okay, uh, now that we, so we control the particles, we control the flow, uh, now we, we control the illumination, and so this is our, typical drop and we, we shine light on this on this thing. So it, it's about 100 microns in diameter and our particles will start moving around, okay? When they move, I mean, they, they, they go a certain distance over time. And as you can see in this, in this plot here, you can define a velocity, a roughly constant velocity over most of their trajectory. When they arrive near the boundary, I mean, they, they slow down because they arrive. You can do this in in, uh, in bulk, actually, this is a trajectory without any drop, and trajectories with or without drops are roughly similar, and you get similar velocities for uh, a similar intensity. Okay? And if you plot velocity of particles versus uh, laser intensity per, um, per uh, area, okay, you get uh, a velocity between, let's say, a fraction of a micron all the way to roughly 100 microns, and this velocity depends on the intensity, of course, and, and also on some of the particle, uh, the drop properties like the viscosity, as you can see here between the green, the green dots and the other ones. But in any case, we, have, we know what the velocity of the particles is, 
and you know it's roughly constant over the whole graph. So, so let's let's start, let's let's do our uh, uh, experiment <laughs> after all of these things. None of this is floating. Uh, just so, so we start, we have a, a drop full of particles. We deform it, so we start the flow. Okay, it's, it gets deformed. This is the this is somewhat elliptical, as you can see here. Uh, and then we turn the lights on, yeah, we turn the laser on. Uh, the as you can see, the drop changes shape a little bit, yeah, the aspect ratio is not exactly the same. And then we turn the lights off and, and everything becomes, uh, and the flow and everything becomes circular. So we, we characterize this by using this deformation here. So uh, as uh, recall, this is just the long axis minus the short axis normalized by the sum of the two. So if there is no deformation, this is nil, okay? So we start, there is nothing. We turn the, we turn the flow on, so the deformation increases, reaches some plateau value. And then we turn the light on, you know? This is this region here. And as you can see, we go from a certain deformation to something that is smaller, okay? Uh, and then of course, we turn the lights off, it becomes, it returns to its uh, shape at, at the beginning, just with the flow. And if we turn the light on again, again, it, it loses its aspect ratio and becomes slightly more circular. If we do some control experiments with passive particles, for example, or with no particles, this is the, the, the blue and the orange curves here. So as you can see, you can, of course, they, there is some, there is deformation. Oops. There is deformation. There is deformation, but nothing happens when you turn the lights on or off. So this decrease in deformation is due only to the activity of the particle. Okay? So, let me show you just a, a few a few movies. This is without any, uh, this is passive particles. As you can see, so you turn the turn the flow on, it gets deformed. At some point we'll turn the, the laser on. Laser on, not much happens. These are passive particles, as I said, okay? If we do this with, uh, do this with Janus particles, these are these can be active. So turn the light, turn the flow on, just deformation. And then at some point we turn the laser on. As you can see, the particles start moving. And the it's, it's, it's very brief, but the deformation decreased. And as we turn the laser off, and the deformation goes back to its initial state, maybe with a higher uh, intensity. The slightly higher intensity. Maybe it will not. Oh, it starts. Okay. So be just deformed at some point and then oh missed it too. Okay. Hmm. Oh, okay. So so it's deformed when the light is on, deformation decreases. Just so you would like uh, directly uh, what happened. So, so as, as I showed you, uh, this deformation is nothing else than the, uh, the ratio of the uh, uh, hydrodynamic stresses by the capillary stress. So in, this, in a sense, the capillary stress is inversely proportional to this deformation. Okay. Uh, so if, we, if our deformation decreases, it means that we, that we have an effective surface tension or effective capillary pressure, which is higher, okay? This can be interpreted as an additional pressure, which, which is just the effective capillary pressure minus the initial pressure. And so in a sense, we can measure this thing versus different parameters like velocity of particles or uh, density. And so this is, the, the, the results look like this. So this additional pressure, note that this is in Pascals and we can go up to almost 10 Pascals. Okay? And this is roughly linear in density or number density and in velocity squared, okay? 
Okay, it's independent of the deformation of the extension rate of the drop diameter and the surface tension. If we put everything together, yeah, from different diameters, different viscosities, uh, and plot it versus this expression that I showed you initially, number density, mobility coefficient, velocity squared, and sometimes scale, which we don't know, okay? You can actually collapse all this data together, and you can start thinking about what is this time scale? This time scale, which we got from, for each different uh, particle here, uh, so we should have like five points here, if we plot it versus the inverse diffusion, rotational diffusion coefficient, we get a roughly straight line in this log log plot over almost three orders of magnitude. So somehow, uh, at least for the densities we have examined here, uh, the, pr the, the additional pressure looks like it obeys this initial expression I showed you uh, with a time scale that is given by simply by the rotational diffusion time. And uh, that, that was basically the, the result we obtained. Uh, what this, this work is somehow continuing with uh, Ari Nakamoto, who is a, a, a postdoc in the group. And we're, instead of looking at drops in volume, we're looking at drops on, on a surface uh, to see if we can uh, deform them more easily. But even, but in this case, I mean, we have trouble even understanding a single particle. So somehow for certain drops, the particle can, 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 can practice some sort of uh, um, periodic motion. But for other drops, it does something that is much stranger. So we're, before going into many particles, we're still struggling with a single particle in this case. Thank you.